Eagles Nation, what is up? Tom, views from the link TV. Had to bring it back to another episode of Bird Buzz. And as you see, a little darker in here, a little later. Uh, had a very depressing amount of questions um, and had to gather up a couple more from Twitter. Um, we only had one question this week, and I understand, you know, I haven't been as interactive as I've been on my Instagram account. Um, I used to post a lot more on there, uh, and it's really declined over the last year, year and a half. Uh, you know, I started in 2015 along with this YouTube channel, and, you know, I love talking birds, so I, I stay on here. I try to keep up with it, but completely understandable. Hey, if you can ask a question, that'd be great. If not, hey, if you don't want to, if you don't know the accounts out there, if you're not seeing it, if you unfollowed and you still somehow are watching this video, Hopefully you'll get back on, change your mind, refollow, ask a couple questions. I mean, it is what it is, but I love talking birds, and I actually just ended up watching the Sixers game, and that team, man, whew, they got some issues. They blow, blew another lead, and uh, you know we'll see what happens with them. But I do like a, uh, uh, a comparison that I saw on Twitter, actually, from, uh, from a good account that I follow called underscore Philly underscore talk. Um, go follow that account. Uh, you know, that account tweeted out that the 2017 Sixers are kind of like 2016 Eagles where they just are a young team and they have to learn how to win games. And I kind of see, you know, similarities there. I kind of see a, um, a, a pattern of, you know, the, the team, they look like they have talent, they get out on teams and then they see the lead dissipate and it looks like they lose confidence and they lose sense of really what to do and sense of direction and you know to me that looks like it's on the coach but hey maybe maybe that account is right maybe they do just need to learn how to win games and keep this team together so that they can go forward and um and they can you know build for the future and and really you know get the chemistry going because you know that's just what it looks like and um the difference between I will say oh man I'm a little tired oh Ooh. Uh, I will say the difference, though, is that Brett Brown is a now, I think, fourth or fifth year coach for the Sixers. And Doug Peterson was a first year coach for the Eagles when, you know, they had to learn to win and things like that. So obviously a little bit different situations where the Sixers were kind of going with a very young group, um, you know, it kind of admit, admittedly tanking to acquire better picks, acquire better players. And it just seems like maybe now that they assembled all that, that fans think, oh, it's going to click right away because now the, all these guys are here and this could be a playoff team. And maybe that's just not the case. So maybe, you know, maybe it is the youth. So there's two sides of the coin there. Um, but I, I kind of do like that comparison. And that's why I wanted to bring it up. There's a couple differences, a couple similarities, but I think it's two sides of the coin. I think the coach is uh, a little in over his head, and I think that the uh, youth of the team is really showing. So maybe they just bring it together and keep it going and see what happens because, like the 2016 Eagles, they turned it around. So who knows? If they turn it around next year, then it is a really good comparison. So uh, speaking of the Eagles, so we'll get to the questions. It's bird buzz. It's uh, going to be Friday when you're probably seeing this. i um, posting it really late. Thursday night uh, on West Coast time. So, you know, if you're an Eagles fan living in Philadelphia, you're probably watching this on Friday. So, happy Friday. But let's get into the questions because there wasn't many. There weren't many. Um, so, I posted on Twitter a couple times on my, on my actual account and on my views from the link account. And no one really gave me good responses. You know, I talk to a lot of Eagles fans every day on Twitter, but I ask for questions and no one, no one gives me questions. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, maybe it's just luck of when I post it. Maybe people are just like, forget this, like whatever. Um, a lot of people don't really know I do this channel, but I started a while back and I just, you know, I like doing it. So, like I said. So, uh, anyway, first uh, first question, not really a question, but someone just said Sydney period Jones period and their actual Twitter name, not handle. Their handle is underscore B20 underscore underscore. So, double underscore at the end there. Uh, their their name though their display name is hashtag Sydney Jones season, so he's clearly clearly pulling for Sydney Jones. 
um, to come back. And obviously it's not a question, but it kind of can lead to a question. Will Sidney Jones actually play this season? And I think that um, I think that a lot of fans really want to see him, and I think that they just we just need that spark, and that's why they dropped that news when went the the same press conference they revealed that uh, Carson Wentz had torn his ACL. A couple, like uh, twenty minutes or so before uh, the press conference, they dropped the news that Sidney Jones would be practicing, and uh, you know it's he's kind of like this the savior kind of deal. It's like if he plays up to a certain level, I mean, Jalen, it's like the perfect time because Jalen Mills got beat the last few games. This is a meaningless game that we're going into. And I don't think getting him reps in this game would be such a bad idea. Now, is he going to start? Is he going to play the majority of the snaps? Probably not, but you get him on the field. It's like you've awarded yourself a preseason game. So you get him on the field, you get him reps and you get him ready for whether he's going to get reps in the playoffs, which, you know, you might be reluctant to do, but it'll be for next year going into the offseason, going into preseason. He kind of got an early jump and got reps in a live game prior to waiting an entire year to get that. So, or I mean, a good amount, you know, a little less than a year, but still a long time to not play football. I mean, well, actually, no, pretty much a whole year because, you know, he ended football like last you know, going into the combine and pro day, which is in, you know, into the draft, which is April. And then he, you know, hadn't played in a game until it will, should, it will be in August. So to get him reps in this game would actually do him a, a service. He would get on the field, you know, he missed the whole season, but he would get on the field at least for the last game and at least get some reps, get the confidence up, see what he can do. And if he's medically cleared, if there's a hundred, if he's a hundred percent good to go, then there's no, you know, and he says he feels great. He feels in game shape. You test him out. You see if he's if he's in game shape. Determine the reps and and let him have it. You know, there's you gotta you gotta let this guy build confidence and momentum going into the off season, In my opinion, and I think this is a perfect way to do it. You've awarded yourself this. Now go use it to your advantage. So Sidney Jones season. Let's let's see him out there. Craig Canes Craig A Canes eight asks. Who do you want the Eagles to play first in the playoffs? I think all the teams are tough, honestly. I just, I don't really, it doesn't really matter to me. I think it's a tough game regardless. Um, and, I, yeah, I just I just don't think, I'm not thinking about it that way. And I, I just don't, I don't, I don't really know what to say there because I just don't, first of all, I don't even know who's going to get in because Seattle and Atlanta are still up in the air. And and then you don't know what seed the Rams are going to be, whether they're going to be three or four. You don't know what seed the Vikings are going to be because they're either going to be two, I think, or three. Um, I think the Rams are the only team that can go get that from them. So, or I don't know, maybe they can't. Um, maybe the Vikings do have it locked up. You know, see, that's the thing. I don't even, I'm barely paying attention to that situation. I'm going to let it play out on Sunday. And once the seeds are all kaput, then I'll look at the teams and I'll say, hey, you know, it's still going to be just a tough game regardless of who we play. So it's a good question, but um, I don't really have a preference, to be honest with you. I just I think that you're going to have to play hard. You're going to have to play fast. You're going to have to play defense. You're going to have to run the football well, and you're going to have to take advantage of home field. And Nick Foles, you're going to have to make some throws. It's going to come down to you making some throws. At some point, you're going to have to make them. So that's it, and it, it doesn't matter who you're playing against. Any team, they all have their strengths, weaknesses. You just have to – I've just learned that this season. Motto, just win. Um, so I posted the gif of uh, the the electric the electric slide, and uh, I think that's what it is. Whatever the dance they were doing in uh, the Bears game when Corey Graham got that pick, um, somebody said – Life was good here. We had Carson, and our defense was balling. And then they put a gif of a guy going, why? So, yeah, I mean, I wanted to comment on that because it just brings it brings me, you know, bring hit, hits home for me because it's like I can't even really watch Carson Wentz's highlights right now, like, for the season. I just I can't go back and watch. Anytime I see, like, a highlight start, I have to scroll past on Instagram. I literally cannot watch. I'm, I'm that – I'm still, like – like, geez, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, I, I can't even do it. Oh, 
screen went dark there. Sorry about that. Uh, but I can't even I can't even watch it. I can't even watch highlights of the guy because I'm still just like, man, like can't believe it still. But you know, I think what's got me through, you know, obviously seeing one of our best players or our best player go down with a bad injury is that we're winning games and it's, you know, it's more about the team and that's, you know, I know they're playing for him and he's hoping that they win and he, you know, it's still a team. We still have a team and that's what well, you can't just like act like the season's over because someone got hurt, even if it is the quarterback. I mean, cause if you act like that, then you're, you're going to lose and you're going to, you're going to do that. And you know, you might anyway, but that's part of the game, you know? So even with Wentz, they could have lost. It doesn't matter. I mean, the end of the day, you have to go out and play good football. So I like that that's been their mindset and they found ways to win two weeks in a row to get the one seed. And that's just, that is huge because they play so much better at home. They're well coached. They're a good team at home. They have heart and they're not just going to roll over. So we'll, we'll see what happens in the playoffs, but that's, that's the truth about Philly. I mean, Dallas might come in and beat us because, you know, we're going to probably be pulling guys at halftime, but, um, in, in, in a, in a live bullets game, Playoff come playoff time, I think this team's going to be ready, and I think they're going to be so motivated in front of the fans, and it's just going to be they're going to sneak up on all these teams that think it's some it's some walkover because we have Nick Foles at quarterback. He makes some clutch throws, man. He does. He makes clutch throws. He's lucky, like he's like Flacco or something. Like he he can win. He can win games. So you'll see. You'll see what happens. We got to play good defense though. So I hope that all happens and. uh and then I had another question actually on my other account that was um, that was what are the Eagles going to do in free agency, which I liked that because no one had asked anything about that deep into the future uh, in a while. So uh, I think they're going to uh, – I don't know. It's tough. I think they're going to go after um, some guys of their own and try to rework some contracts and, and get everyone situated on the team currently that they need. And then I think they're going to look to how they can create cap space. And then I think they're going to sign some depth pieces and some like integral, you know, just some pieces that could really help on, you know, they're going to keep most of the same core, but you, you go back and you get some, you might get some, you know, different players here and there, just kind of to plug in. Maybe, you know, you never know. You could maybe get another offensive lineman um, because it doesn't, I don't know about Jason Peters career, after that brutal injury, I mean, maybe he comes back, but who knows? A um, lot of money tied up into him. You got Vinny Curry, so he's got a big contract, and he's, you know, Derek Barnett's pushing to be a guy that can start by next year. So, you know, to, to save some cash there, you go away from him. Torrey Smith's another guy that was kind of signed on a deal where it's like, okay, you can cut him at any time, and that's $5 million off your cap. Darren Sproles as well. So you're, you're going to have some running backs, a uh, hole. You're going to have a whole wide receiver, you know, at wide receiver two next to Alshon. I think Matt Collins is good. Nelson Aguilar is more for the slot. Matt Collins is good, but I still think his role is just a rotational guy that can, you know, be a weapon and develop. I think that's going to be it for another year. Maybe they do just keep Torrey Smith on the outside just because he's a cheap option, but maybe they try to clear up some cap space and go get a difference maker on the other side, just a little bit better than, Corey Smith is, and uh, I don't know who's really out there, but, you know, there's just some things they can upgrade slightly. I mean, usually you want the same pieces coming back, but with Alshon, Nelson Aguilar, and Zach Ertz being, you know, the guys Carson Wentz is probably going to go to the most anyway, you can go out and try to get another threat outside of uh, Alshon, and maybe even a linebacker, but I think there's also the draft for these things. So just free agency, it's tough to say. But I think that it's going to be about moving cap around and figuring out some of these some of these spots that, you know, are are filled with players that make a lot of money or, you know, middling contracts, but could be cleared for more cap and aren't really productive players. Um, and not to say guys like Darren Sproles and um, Torrey Smith aren't like good you know obviously Sproles is injured but they've been they've been making their plays Torrey Smith's got a couple plays he draws some pass interferences he uh he makes big catches so um he's made a couple big bomb catches this year and uh he's he's a veteran guy who's going to come in work hard and all that but at the end of the day you can still upgrade these guys and I don't think you're going to do it so quickly but I think that eventually those are those are the things they're going to need to do so um 
we'll see what they do in free agency. I think it's going to be more of a draft year where they try to get draft capital. I think they're going to try to go out and they're going to try to really position themselves nicely in the draft and draft more young, talented players to go around this team with Wentz, with Alshon, with um, even you know on defense with Barnett, Sidney Jones, Fletcher Cox, um, Ronald Darby. You know, there's just young talent in the secondary in on the defensive line in the linebacking core, and I think they're just going to try to supplement that with more groomed talent, uh, uh, talent that they can groom, so that when they have some departures and they need to save some money, they have their own young guys building into these spots, and if they keep hitting on picks. They're going to be a dangerous team, so um, I think that's a no-brainer. And uh, and then I also think that um, they just need to continue to um, really get guys that are for the type of scheme. I mean, not not only scheme, but also the personality, uh, the theme, if you will, of this team. Um, I think it's a hard-working bunch. I think there's a lot of leadership on it, and getting guys that are winners with winner mentalities and you know, play hard and have that Philly attitude like LeGarrette Blunt, Jay Ajay, you know, they run the ball hard. Corey Clement, even who we drafted or signed undrafted free agent, they all run with the same style, that physical, mean style. They're giving their all for wins. They're loving every second of it. And we all acquired them within the last year, you know, free agent pickup, free agent pickup and trade. So you can bring guys in quick like that off different than just the draft, but you have to get guys that fit the, the personality of this team and the, the theme of what we're trying to do and what Doug Peterson preaches and what Wentz wants to be a leader for on the offensive side of the ball and then what guys like Malcolm Jenkins expect on the defensive side of the ball. So um, it's just about supplementing that leadership with guys that are going to buy in and, and really be team guys and understand what their roles are and how it's done around here So uh, in Philly. So um yeah, that's what I think about free agency. And then, uh, I mean, I stretched out a few questions, but I still do have one more uh, actually on Instagram. It's the one question we got. I wouldn't want to leave that guy hanging. So long video, but uh, Smithboy93 asks, why all of a sudden analysts and fans doubting our team after one game? Well, let me tell you, everyone loves to doubt. The best teams, everyone loves to doubt, obviously, the, the Philadelphia. It seems like the Philadelphia Eagles. But at the same time, I'm not going to play victim. It's because Carson Wentz went down. And a lot of people think, you know, oh, well, the season's over. And rightfully so. You know, you, you got a guy playing at an MVP level and you lose him that late in the season. And all you ever hear about from Eagles fans how great he is and how, you know, how he's this, this superstar. And then you lose him for the season to an ACL tear, like the worst injury possible. So it just seems like a death like a death punch to the Eagles where it's like oh well something about some uh, bad was bound to happen because of how like you know they were getting so excited and stuff and it's like no we're still going to be excited so I think a lot of people doubt the team just because of that but I still think this team's capable of making a little run and uh, winning a playoff game at least um, you know hosting the NFC championship will be amazing and just being being in that atmosphere you know, it would be great. So I think a lot of people are doubting the fact that they can even do that. But we'll have to see. And I think that uh, it's going to be great to be in the house for that playoff game. So fly, Eagles, fly. Don't worry about the doubters. Covered a lot of things in this in this video. So just got to believe, man. Fly, Eagles, fly.